Last time on Rockin' the Oldies. Next turn. Ooh, nice. We got a reaction shot. Greetings and salutations to the denizens of the Cyber Dog Nation, the Redditors of the XCOM subreddit, and all the peoples of YouTube and the interwebs. This is Ivan Dogovich, rocking the oldies, with the 46th episode of Let's Play Retro XCOM Terror from the Deep. In the last episode, we finished off a tactical mission on a small sub near Libya, killed five Gilman, and we took a couple of wounded soldiers. We are going to head back to base and do some recovery. So let's get that rolling. Not enough to fully equip the squad because we've burned up some pistol clips. Well, let's head on back. All right, ah, uh, base management here. So we will do some sales really quick here and I will queue those up, be right back. Okay, just over a million dollars queued up here. We're selling off a couple cannons, uh, one blaster rifle, we're selling off all of the Gilmen, um, most of the, uh, a lot of the subcomponents too, some ion beam accelerators, etc. That will go into our general fund. That we're kind of saving up both to do some uh, impressive builds on our bases, so let's get that sold. Okay, next we need to get some pistol clips manufacturing. Now, the ion armor is, I'm pretty sure, we've, we've got a full complement. So at this point, I'm going to reduce the technicians on this down to almost nothing here. It'll bump the time up, but what we really need is pistol clips. We need those badly uh, just because we our technit our soldiers um, are ending up with they, they use up like a clip every mission. So we need to get enough to at least equip the the, the troops here. So I'm gonna build a quick 14 see how long that takes that'll take a day and a half which is fine we'll crank that up I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up to 20 because that's really we need 20 plus and then I'll probably have some more building with a few technicians now having said that I mentioned before that uh, Burgo Maine is going to become our manufacturing center and we do have a workshop in place and we do have living quarters in place and we do have some troops there. We've transferred some rookies over to to our main base, Rendog Prime. But this base will have two workshops, maybe more, and enough living quarters to host all the technicians, and enough for a security staff, which is our troops. But um, I will continue to use one workshop, at least, here at Rendog Prime, to do the things like making pistol clips. We won't need a ton of technicians but we will keep some so I'm gonna go ahead and man hmm no I'm gonna I'm gonna wait I, I was gonna say I was gonna hire some technicians here and then maybe fire some at Rendog Prime actually that's not a bad idea let's go ahead and do that we can fire some there see there's a trick that you can do at the end of the month yeah wow because we need about 35 technicians to use one workshop. That's about how many you can use. There's a trick you can do right at the end of the month. <laughs> you can transfer your technicians uh, from one base to another. And if they are in trans, if they're in transit, like in between bases and haven't yet arrived at the new base when the month rolls over you don't have to pay for their services <laughs> so base information like monthly cost here at Burgo Main um, we don't have any subs or anything we've got five aquanauts so it's a hundred thousand so the total cost of running the base is right about two hundred thousand if I come over to Rendog Prime the monthly costs for the technicians is eight hundred thousand so I could save that inner thousand by transferring these guys right before the end of the month, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not really. It's it is a little trick you can do, and you know if I was doing that every month and swapping them in and out, I'd lose a few days of research or manufacturing, but I could probably save what's this uh, about three million for a hundred scientists, which we will need, and then the technicians, um, you know, you could probably save. Four million a month, but 
Psh, I'm not worried about it. Okay. Looking good there. Stores. Um, I just did want to look at these. These. Um, you got, so we got lots of living quarters still at Rundog Prime, so that's good. I'll probably go ahead and hire five more scientists just to bump our number up to use all of our labs. We're, we're using 95 lab space. Okay, let's go ahead and hire five more scientists. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get a couple more Aquanauts here too. Seems like we're, um, we've got a spate of uh, sick bay action going on here, so we'll hire a few more folks. Looking good. Standard sonar. Yeah, I don't really want you there. I do want to build something else here, though. So we've got plenty of living quarters. We've got... So I'm going to go ahead and build another one of the general stores. You can never really have too many general stores. All right, that'll work. That will work. Looking good here. Still got three days on general stores here. All right. Okay, oh, I know what I wanted to do. Wanted to check out our Aquanauts really quick. So let's see how we're doing here. Okay, Mr. Bad News. Seven missions, still only one kill. Wow, dude, I had you scouting all over the place but not got you any kills, so we'll have to fix that. Um, yeah, Sean got uh, five missions, four kills. Looking good there. Barrett, seven missions, five kills. Didn't get anything that last episode, I don't believe. Kazzy got another kill, nine and eight. Look at that, accuracy is looking good, strength, time. Yeah, nice improvement. Black Kira didn't go on the mission, D's nuts. Eight missions, six kills, nice time units, great strength, firing accuracy. Man, I need to just have you plink at stuff. You need to spend some time on the range, but um, oh well. Okay, Hawkeye, we don't see an actual bump in reactions there, but I think your accuracy has improved again, and your time units is up. Nice. Okay, you're going to be out for 11 days. No, out for 22 days. Okay, 11 missions, 11 kills. Wow. All right, so yeah, you'll be out for a little while. We'll see if somebody gets over that kill count. Tom, Jang, uh, eight missions, seven kills. Nice work. Okay, G Tiger, nine missions, two kills. Finally got you a second kill there, but you'll be out for a day. No big deal. Conehead, 11 missions, five kills. Need to get you some more. I'd like to see your stats improve a little bit, especially time units. Uh, Rowanna. Got to go on another mission that time, but didn't get to shoot anything. I know how uh, disappointing that is for you, as much as you like to shoot things. 73 accuracy, I love that. Kloto, 71 accuracy, 4 missions, 2 kills. Looking good. Tetsu, 8 missions, 2 kills. A bit of improvement. Alright. Nightmare, 6 missions, still only 1 kill. We gotta get that improved. Squirrel, still in the infirmary. Wintergrave, still in the infirmary. Jay Perro, also with the nurses hanging out. Uh, Mastermind, three missions, one kill. And back to Mr. Bad News. All right, a quick run through the barracks there. All right, let's take a look at our science. I don't think it's changed that much. Oh, we're up to progress of good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, let us go ahead. 25th of April. Let's kick it into fast forward. We've got our transferees in from Burgo, Maine. These rookies will be joining us on our next episode, our next mission. Looking to get some of them. Who promoted? <laughs> Why is it always gotta happen to me? Okay, so we have a large sub, very deep. All right, with as much activity as we've got going on, I really suspect that what we're seeing is an alien colony being set up. The enemy subs will fly around and do a lot of landing, smaller subs and medium subs, when they are looking for things like that. Then you'll get large subs 
especially supply subs, but sometimes dreadnoughts. We can't tell what this is right now, but sometimes we will be able to tell, especially when we have transmission resolvers. And they will fly around and they will land, often two or three of them, and then an alien colony will start nearby. The other thing you'll get with large subs is the subs, especially supply subs, will periodically visit an existing alien colony and they will land and they're actually a great source of materials experience resources etc if you can grind them you just um, go to every landed supply sub on a nearby colony and you can collect a bunch of loots all right so we're gonna have to we, we can't these large subs are too much for our barracudas to handle we can't shoot them down but we can follow them, and if they do land, we might be able to take one down with, again, our, uh, our soldiers. So that's probably what we're going to do. Hmm. Let's see where he's at. Oh, he's in the Indian Ocean. Oh, see, he's, he's almost too far away. Because the other thing that can happen with these guys is they can be... They can be on a terror mission. Hmm. How do I want to handle this? It's in the ocean, Indian Ocean, just kind of cruising around. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get a couple rookies into the team, swap out the armor, and prep our Triton for any action. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I've swapped crew around. Um, I've actually added in all five of our rookies, and I've swapped armor around. We've got all five rookies going out. Um, if we get a mission coming up pretty quick, we'll see how that goes, because I really don't know what their stats are, how they'll do, but I will try to get them all some action. Um, we also have enough pistol clips now to fully equip the squad. So that Triton is ready to go. I am really unsure what this will do um, I'm afraid that if I send the Triton directly after it and it takes too much time well let's go ahead and do it we'll just launch it it is day over here this will take um, a while to get over here within range and he may go out of our actual detection range before we get there so we will track him. He can also be involved in a terror mission. So that's what I'm afraid of, really, is that... Okay, pistol clips are done. All right, Triton is still coming. Oh, looks like we're going to get a night mission, actually. Um, I'm afraid that if he, if our Triton runs out of fuel or whatever and this ship doesn't land that we could end up missing a terror mission which would hurt okay okay there it is there's the terror mission so we were headed toward the terror mission anyway okay all right an island attack um it looks like it's gonna be a night island mission this could get pretty brutal folks we're still in april so we may still be okay, but if this is a new alien race, this could be pretty brutal. All right. You are actually targeted on the terror site just like you should be. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. You're continuing to go where you're supposed to go. All right, folks. Hold your fingers. Cross your thumbs. We're about to do a touchdown at night in Mauritius on a terror mission. Uh, just off Madagascar. Okay. Non-optimal, to say the least, but really, when terror missions come around, you can't really do too much about them. They, you, you have to respond to them. We've got the troops. We've got the armor. The island missions are, in my opinion, better than the port missions. Um, we lost a couple troops on the island before when we were dealing with Gilman. 
just due to the fact of the, the crazy bunkers and the way the aliens can camp. So we'll try to deal with that a little better. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and equip the troops, and I'll be right back, and we'll kick the mission into, into... We'll start it up. Okay, I've equipped everybody pretty much with a... with a flare, and I also set up uh, Barrett with our gas cannon with phosphorus rounds to help us spread some light. And let's go ahead and take a peek out the door. We need to start getting things lit up. We've got a house right there. Just bad news, take a peek that way if you would. Let's get some light over here. It's going to be very important to spread the light. Kazzy, take a look this way. Okay, we're at the north edge of the map. And it looks like we're at the far corner. So that's actually helpful. Everything will be in front of us this way. Okay, Kazzy, if you would toss your light down this direction please a little throw there okay got some trees in the way hmm how tall is this house a couple levels hmm yeah tom toss one to to cassie i want you to throw another one out there let's go let's see barrett you toss yours too Mr. Bad News, not you, not you, okay, Mr. Bad News, pick this one up, I'd like to get even more light down this direction, please, okay, that's lit up, I think I'm going to have you guys just step back into the sub, really quick, we still not spotted any enemy, hmm, right there, Kazzy, how about you throw one over here? How about up here? How about there? There, there. Okay. Starting to light the area up a bit. All right. Kazzy, duck back into the sub. We're going to finish off this turn right here. And this actually, we will go ahead and finish this, this episode right here as well. We've got a terror mission at night on an island off of Madagascar to look forward to. We don't know what enemy type we're looking at, but uh, I can guarantee you it will be um, it will be exciting. Night missions are never fun and can be quite a challenge. Uh, if we're still dealing with Gilman, it should go fairly smoothly. So we will do our best. And uh, I'd like to thank you for joining me for this episode. This episode of Rockin' the Oldies, a retro Let's Play with Ivan Dogovich, has been brought to you by Dogcraft.net, the XCOM subreddit, and TNT Malta. Viewers like you make this series possible. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. This is Ivan Dogovich. Cheers! <laughs>